Well, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you've weighed your ingredients um, and if you've bought a pack like this from the supermarket it's easier to use um, your hands to get it out of the uh, packet. I know that these bowls give me around 100 grams of meat um, so I'm weighing out two little sections and um, for my lasagna I'm going to include um, some bacon to add extra seasoning and it's very important that you learn to um, handle meat safely so if you've used your hands um, to portion out make sure you wash your hands afterwards um, put cling film over the portions you've got and then sanitize the table um, so that you can then wrap the ingredients up and put them back in the chiller if you've got leftover ingredients. Always wrap your meat and um, put it in the chiller to store it to stop E. coli from um, going out of control. All raw meat, uh, red meat has E. coli in it and it's the amount of bacteria um, that causes the problem. Um, one single E. coli won't kill you but several being allowed to reproduce at room temperature is not good. So once everything's sanitised and your hands are washed, you then want to um, start browning the meat that you've put in to the front saucepan. The front saucepan um, is for the re reduced sauce that we're going to ma make. The back saucepan is off the heat that we're going to use later on. So what we're trying to do here is to brown the meat off. And then once that's happened, we're going to add the ingredients. Now, if you can't add ingredients to the saucepan without spilling on the hob, take it off the hob and put it on the wooden triangle. I'm making um, a family size portion here. You're going to be making a single portion because it's, it's quicker in the time you've got to cook all the ingredients for a single portion than it would be if it was for a family size portion. So here what we're doing, that's a little bit of stock cube adding there. We're trying to um, evaporate some of the water that's in the um, meat and vegetables that we've added. So I've got parsley, stock cube, I've got a little bit of balsamic vinegar and some Worcester sauce that goes in there. And you can see the steam is rising out of the pan. This is the evaporation of the water that's in the ingredients as it is. Uh, a pinch of salt there, you can add as much salt as you like. Now what we want to try and do here is evaporate the water and get a little bit of the um, ingredients sticking on the pan. Now those ingredients, we don't want them to burn, but those sticky ingredients will get dissolved into the water when you add it. Um, when you add the tomato puree, it intensifies and thickens the sauce a little bit more and the Maillard reaction is happening on the bottom of the pan where all those lovely compounds which will flavour the sauce not burning just slightly sticking and at this point when all this um, in water has been evaporated we're going to add more water and the reduced sauce is basically tomato puree to thicken and add intense flavour you add your water you boil it off, you add your water, you boil it off and you boil it off to the um, to this consistency that you need the sauce to be. So when you're adding the water it may seem a bit strange that you're all, all you're going to do then is evaporate it off but this process of evaporating the water off intensifies those flavours and compounds. So the water dissolves all of those compounds that stuck to the bottom, the Maillard reaction, that nice meaty taste that you get with meat and caramelised onions. Um, and you can add your spinach at this point or later on, it'll wilt down to being hardly there, but it will add vitamins and nutrients to the sauce. So, do you want your sauce to be like a soft mound on the plate? So you reduce it less and evaporate the water less. If you want it to be a firm slice, then you reduce it a lot more and get rid of a lot more of the water. So you need to decide what kind of lasagna you want. Either way, you're going to swap the pan over now because I want to reduce that sauce a little bit more and you're going to toggle those pans so that you can um, attend to your white sauce. Now the white sauce is butter, 
corn flour, a little bit of mustard in the pan. Stir it until it becomes a paste and that's called a roux, R-O-U-X. Take it off the heat when it's all melted and add your milk. Make sure you're not spilling milk on the, on the um, hob. Then what you want to do, it looks very unpromising at this stage, you want to keep stirring and make sure that you're not getting any of that corn flour burning on the bottom of the pan because the corn flour granules, once they're burnt, you won't be able to um, get a nice smooth sauce. In the meantime, you keep stirring that reducing sauce on the back pan. So we're stirring with a balloon whisk so that we can distribute the um, starch granules a little bit more evenly and none of them will clump together and go on the base. You'll feel the sauce thicken. So at this stage you want to keep stirring it and make sure you're maintaining the stirring at the back as well on the back pan and you'll feel the sauce thicken on the base of the pan. So get your balloon whisk and really touch the bottom of the pan with the balloon whisk and keep stirring it and here it's starting to thicken so I'm going a little bit shorter with my um, movements and if I think it's burning lift I lift it off the off the hob don't bother turning the hob down that's too takes too long a time to get the um, reduction of heat so you regulate the heat by taking the pan off the hob and you stir it much more vigorously and then we'll take it off and add the cheese so we don't want any cheese burning on this hob and it will take very little time for the cheese to melt because of the residual heat in the pan. And when I think I've got the right consistency, I take it off the heat and I pull down the back pan so I don't have to reach over a hot hob. Remember to switch the back hob off. So I now need to decide how much of a reduction I want and I think I'm there. So you can see the reduction happens because of the evaporation of the water. The steam gives us some indication. When both sauces are done, I need to then decide whether or not the bechamel sauce, which is now a Mornay because it's got cheese in it. So the bechamel starts as a white sauce, becomes a Mornay with grated cheese that melts in. I now need to decide whether or not, having cooled the sauce a little bit, whether it's too thick. So I've added a little bit of milk here because I want my sauce to be a little bit thinner than this. So you can decide on that because as you know, a bechamel sauce or a gelatinized sauce, which is what this is, as it cools, it thickens because of retrogradation. So a gelatinized sauce is basically your starch granules swelling up, drinking all of the liquid that's in the pan and they swell up to about five times their size. They start drinking up at 60, they swell up by 80 and then they burst and all the starch molecules spill into the sauce and they you've got to keep them distributed evenly. Now they don't dissolve with the liquid, they suspend themselves in the liquid and as long as you've kept um, stirring they'll suspend evenly and you'll get a really nice smooth creamy sauce with no lumps. And the particles look a little bit like ping pong balls in a swimming pool. Imagine a swimming pool full of ping pong balls. They're all suspended evenly around each other. Um, and that's what you want out of a well gelatinized suspension sauce. So this sauce has gone cooler. It's allowed me to see whether or not it's going to be too thick. And so I've added more milk because that's my personal taste for my lasagna. When both sauces are done, you're ready to um, plate up. I obviously decided there I wanted it to be thinner. And you can see as long as you mix it in really well, this sauce is cooled but not completely cold. So it will mix in that milk for me. Then we need to use um, the lasagna sheets. Now the lasagna sheets come firm because they're dehydrated. So we're going to rehydrate it with the sauce. And when this bakes, the lasagna sheets will actually absorb some of the sauce. So the sauce will become more reduced and the lasagna uh, sheets will um, soften. And I'm just making these the right size for this particular container. I don't think I'll be able to get three sheets in this. I might only get two. If the dish was deeper, you'd get more sheets and more layers. So first of all, you put a, a thin layer of the meat sauce in the base of the, of the container. This is a single portion. 
add your lasagna sheet layer, then another layer of meat sauce. And you just want to distribute that meat sauce evenly so that you know the lasagna sheet's going to have a chance to absorb some of the sauce in the meat. Right, then another layer. And there's two ways you can go about this. You could have a layer of lasagna sheet um, underneath the bechamel or the meat sauce underneath the bechamel. You can decide. And you don't want to fill this container past the shoulder that helps to seal the lid. Otherwise, you'll end up spilling it out the um, container. Foil side down and this is now ready to bake. And you're going to bake this at home um, so that you can um, have it fresh from the oven. Otherwise, you'd have to reheat it when you got home. So when this is ready to, to uh, cook, you uh, put it in an oven at 180 degrees until it's piping hot. Take the lid off so that you can brown the top of the lasagna uh, Mornay sauce. You need to make sure that before you uh, cook this, you store it properly so that the bacteria doesn't grow. Um, so this would go into the chiller once the dish has gone to room temperature. Don't put hot food into a chiller. It does two things. It raises the temperature of the chiller, thereby making everything that's in there in, uh, go into the danger zone. Um, and it also uh, ruins the compressor on the, chi on the chiller. So wait till it goes down to room temperature. It's sealed so the bacteria won't get in it. Then stick it into the chiller and uh, you will take it home chilled. And then you, if you want to, you can freeze this until um, you want it at a later date. Or once um, you're ready to eat it, take it out the chiller, take the lid off, stick it in an oven and bake it. And that will help allow the lasagna sheets to absorb um, the sauces. So the finished one for me was a slight soft mound on the plate, garlic bread and so on. Um, so the task I want you to do is to answer these questions. First of all, list the equipment used to make the lasagna. And then I want you to tell me what happens to the sauce in the first pan to make it thicker and have a more intense flavour. And in the second saucepan, what happens to thicken that bechamel? What's going on with those starch particles? When cheese is added, what is the name of the new sauce? What happens to the lasagna sheets when the dish is baked? List the hazards and the risk avoidance strategies when making this dish. What are the sensory properties of a, a good lasagna? And what reduction level will your lasagna have? Will it be a soft mound or will it be a sliceable um, sheet?